Up to now, automation has helped finance and accounting teams in many ways, except one, the shared accounting mailbox. In a recent study, 70% of finance professionals stated repetitive follow-ups and lack of responsiveness are the biggest challenges they face. The accounting inbox is overflowing and someone must go through all these messages. Finance and accounting teams are drowning in emails and they need help. Enter Auditoria, the first conversational AI system purpose-built to handle finance and accounting tasks. AI-enabled smartbots engage with shared inboxes to execute tasks and automate redundant manual processes. For AP teams, Auditoria smartbots intercept and respond to vendor email requests 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, without relying on human intervention. More than 90% of incoming messages are understood and handled by Auditoria's AP help desk within 60 seconds. Smartbots also onboard new vendors and update tax forms for your suppliers. On the AR side, Smartbots optimize dunning and collections, processing customer payments quickly and efficiently. Auditoria manages your customer payments with intelligent classification rules for personalized engagement and sends courtesy notices based on targeted cadences. AR Help Desk automatically handles inquiries and provides copies of invoices and POs to your customers. Smartbots speed up payments, prioritize AR team performance, and provide critical insights into cash performance. With Auditoria, finance teams experience a dramatic increase in productivity. Smartbots handle thousands of requests, freeing your accounting team to handle more challenging work. Smartbots hand off to humans when necessary to optimize your team's efforts and focus resources on the most value-added tasks. Robust reporting improves decision-making and achieves better cash performance. Take back your inbox with Auditoria Smartbots so your teams focus on the most important finance work. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where in the world you're calling in from. My name is Nick Ezzo. I'm the Vice President of Marketing at Auditoria, and you are on our Lunch and Learn. Today, we're going to have some fun. We're going to talk about the Auditoria AP Help Desk, and we might even get into some uh, other topics, including vendor invoice data extraction. I'm glad to see a good number of participants on the call today, so uh, let's get started. Let's do some housekeeping first to help you get the most of this event. First of all, you will receive a recording of this webcast after the event. Um, I'll send you an email along with the recording, a uh, copy of the survey that we're going to talk about a little bit in the beginning of this, as well as some supplemental materials. I encourage you to answer questions during this session. Uh, to do so, please use the Q&A button on your screen. I think it's on the bottom. Just press that in, uh, type your question, hit enter, and we'll either answer it live here or um, through the chat. If we don't get to your question, I promise you I will research the answer and I will send it to you also in an email. Finally, last but not least, this is a lunch and learn. So we will send out the Grubhub gift cards after this event. I'll try to get to that this afternoon. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're gonna talk about some survey results, why um, accounts payable teams need automation. We're gonna do an AP Help Desk overview. We're gonna go through a live demo, about a four minute clip of uh, AP Help Desk. Then we're gonna talk about vendor invoice data extraction, another four minute clip. I'll bring my friend Rob Frasconi in to talk about that. We'll conclude and then we'll open the floor to any Q&A. So for the third year in a row, we have surveyed a number of finance professionals. Uh, in 2020, we uh, surveyed about 250 people. Uh, last year, 2021, it was about 450. This year we surveyed around 650 finance professionals and we asked them, what are the most manual processes that you face every day in the back office? And you know, one of the things we figured out is that automation is no longer nice to have, it's, it's a must have. And corporate finance has to step up and embrace that automation or, get, or they'll, get risk, uh, they'll risk being left behind or worse, becoming overwhelmed, overworked, resulting in burnout, turnover and greater risk for the organization. So not surprising, um, accounts receivable and accounts payable have led the way as having the most manual processes. Time spent checking and updating data was identified as the biggest challenge across the finance back office. Inaccurate or partially complete information and lack of employee of responsiveness from employees and vendors and suppliers, and customers were the biggest daily pain points. Interestingly enough, we, we parsed the information based on the, the, the role, um, the title level within the organization. Not surprising, we found that CFOs reported that gathering or analyzing data for insights and reports and giving guidance to the business was what they spent most of their time doing. No surprise, that's what the CFO does. 
the person who reports to her, the CFO, uh, like the VP of uh, accounting, uh, VP of finance, director, manager of finance accounting, they spend a lot of time gathering the data for their boss so that the CFO can analyze that data. And then lastly, the frontline folks, finance specialists, professionals in AP, AR, treasury tax, and audit, they stated that executing audit and compliance related activities took up the most, uh, the largest amount of their time. Good news is that uh, priorities for the upcoming year were things like focus on process improvements. That's awesome. It's great news. I love to hear that. And then investing in new technologies to improve those processes. And as somebody who uh, markets and promotes these technologies, I was very pleased to hear that. So let's dive into some of our survey results and then we'll get to the demo. So of course, we said uh, we noticed AP and AR um, you know, were the most manual processes. But uh, you know, when you look at, at the AP work, um, or let's just lump accounts payable and procurement and vendor management together in one bucket, a whopping 41.3% reported that AP procurement and vendor management were the most manual processes in their day-to-day -day life. If only there was a better way. Uh, manual data input was also a challenge. So regarding the vendor management, what are the challenges? So manually inputting data, uh, invoice data into the general ledger, 26 and a half percent of the people said that was a big problem. Responding to those vendor inquiries, where's my payment? Uh, is my payment approved? That was a, you know, a whopping 23.4%. So you take those two things together, you've got you know, about half of the, the audience who said those two things are, are, are the biggest obstacles and the, the most manual things that they, uh, that they face every day as challenges. On a day-to-day -day basis, what are the, the pain points that people said? Well, let, let's break it down by uh, individual um, roles or responsibilities. So um, repetitive manual tasks run rampant in the back office. And as you know, record keeping often translates into hours spent inputting data manually into systems and updating records. I mean, everyone's proud of their 10 key skills, but you know, honestly, that's where errors take place. And that's where you know, a lot of time is spent um, correcting errors and, and doing things manually. So AP and AR tasks require a keen eye to notice trends and discrepancies. And about a fifth of the respondents said a daily pain was inaccurate or partially completed uh, information from vendors and their suppliers. Surprising that in uh, 2022, to me, I'll just uh, comment on that, with all the technology available, people are still entering data manually, efficiently, and slowly in an old school 10 key fashion. Uh, based on internal research or external research from folks like Gartner and Constellation Research, um, they are predicting that in the next few years, data extraction from invoices will be a completely automated process. There's no reason why uh, a human being can do what a machine can do better. Uh, that said, communication is key whether it's sending that fifth follow-up email to your client or, or, or your um, vendor supplier with an outstanding bill or creating or sending receipts for paid transactions, communicating and the constant back and forth, that consumes hours and hours and hours of valuable time. Just over 20% of the respondents indicated that a lack of responsive, responsiveness from employees, vendors and customers was the biggest pain point in the finance back office. And 15% of people said that managing and taking action on the inbox was the biggest pain point. Again, if there was only a solution to handle that problem, and you will see that today when my friend Rob uh, shows you the demo. Okay, now uh, let's talk about email for a second. You know, the death of email has been predicted for many, many, many years, um, but I'm here to tell you in 2022, it hasn't gone away. In fact, it's only gotten worse. So for a planet that we live on that has about 7 billion people on it, there are 300 billion emails sent and received every single day. That's, I don't know how many that is per, per person. You can do the math there, but it's just overwhelming. And uh, you know, the finance office is overwhelmed. So let's get into the Auditoria SmartFlow platform. I'll give you a quick overview. And I'm going to hand the reins to Rob. So um, our platform is called the, um, the Auditoria SmartFlow Skills Platform. On that platform, we have a number of different applications. This one is called Smart Vendor. And Smart Vendor, you can see this little guy, this little bot in the middle. He is uh, sitting on top of our platform. That platform's got a lot of cool technology like natural language and artificial intelligence and machine learning and um, optical character recognition, computer vision, a lot of great acronyms. And that bot sits in between two major, like very important systems in the back office. One is the ERP, the general ledger, the system of record. Whether it's uh, Workday or Sage Intact or NetSuite or Microsoft Dynamics or any number of great cloud-based systems, that's your system of record. And your CFO, your controller, your FP&A people, your auditors, they all work out of that same system, as well as your AP team, your vendor management, your procurement teams, your accounts payables team. On the other side of our bot is the system of engagement, 
characterized by this little envelope with an at sign that is an email. And so whether that email is Microsoft Outlook powered by Microsoft 365, or whether it's um, Gmail powered by Google Workspaces, that system of engagement is used every single day. Vendors are saying, hey, where's my bill? Where, 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 where's my payment? When am I gonna get paid? Am I in the queue? Have I been approved? All that back and forth every single day um, normally happens with the AP team. And I'm gonna show you today how that the majority of those routine questions can be handled by the smart bots. So let's dig into the smart flow skills that make up the smart vendor suite of products. AP Help Desk continually monitors the shared email box and escalates, uh, escalations are identified and actions are taken automatically by the bots or surface to a human being. Vendor invoice data extraction uh, takes the information out of invoice PDFs that are attached to those emails. And that captured data is approved for um, upload to systems of record. Uh, those, invoice, uh, those invoices are also coded by line item, category, and a, a variety of places. And you know, what's interesting, what, what Rob will show you on the demo, is that um, no two companies have the same format of invoice. Invoices all look different. And um, our bots are smart enough to understand this is an address block, this is a line item, this is a payment date, due date, this is a um, the, the, the line items and the amounts, this is the total. So um, show you that in a minute. What we're not going to talk about today is vendor onboarding, which is a, a great application for automatically bringing new vendors on board and having a human being approve that. Uh, again, the bots do all the legwork on getting the information from the vendor and setting them up in the general ledger. And then also, we're not going to talk about vendor W9 data refresh, which is a way that our bots can wake up periodically, reach out to your active vendors and ask them for their new updated W9 uh, tax forms. So what are the benefits of this? Improved productivity for your team, 60% or greater. Improved uh, or reduced process workload, reduce that workload by about 75% or more. Improved vendor serviceability and their happiness goes up by 75%. Reduce vendor risk and fraud, that invoice that comes in. Uh, how do we know that it's real? The bots do a lot of checking to make sure this is a valid approved vendor in the system. Improved compliance and tax record collection. And then potentially the, the delayed need to hire future FTE resources. If you can redeploy your staff to do higher level work and let the bots do that routine mundane stuff, everybody's gonna be happier and you can potentially delay those future full-time equivalent resources. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Rob to give us the AP Help Desk demo. Hi, this is Rob Frascioni with Auditoria and today we're gonna to talk about AP Help Desk. So AP Help Desk is a bot. It is a smart flow skill that's offered in our smart flow platform. So when we go to set up the skill, we're going to operate within this blue band here, autonomous procure to pay. But I want to talk a little bit about the data that we're going to be looking at and utilizing. And to do that, I'm going to open up our autonomous vendor management dashboard, and I'm going to open up our vendor explorer. And what we see here is we see a sync of all the different vendors and, and vendor details, including the aging for all of the different underlying invoices. So this is the, looking at one vendor record in more detail. And it's important because the bots are really going to act as your junior accountants. So what are the bots going to need to know? They need to know, hey, who are the contacts? We need to update those and bring those in from the ERP system. What are the defaults for you know, vendor data, data invoice extraction, those invoices that we can use advanced OCR, computer vision technologies to pull data off the invoices and create vendor invoices within your ERP system. You also may want to you know, keep a record of, of notes or be able to see the notes generated by the system. Down below, we see a kind of a more exploded, more detailed view, some additional detail in that vendor record below. This is the information that's going to get synced on every four hours from the ERP system. I'm going to go back to our homepage here to talk about and kind of show briefly a little bit of the setup for our AP help desk skill. And let's think about what that, that skill is going to do. The bot, you're going to authorize the bots to monitor that shared mailbox where vendors are sending invoices and vendors are sending requests. And what are those, those typical requests you get from vendors? My experience has been they want to know two really important things. Do you have the invoice? When are you going to pay it? We're going to set up a, a skill to monitor all of that incoming traffic so that the bots can take action and respond so that your team doesn't have to. If we look at this blue bar here, this is more our broad business process for autonomous procure to pay. We look down the list, we can see different smart flow skills on that vendor management procure to pay side. We're going to focus here on AP Help Desk. We've got an instance of smart flow skill already running, and we can see some particulars the ERP. We can see what its particular status is. We could stop it if we would want to. 
we're going to do is we're just going to go in here and we're going to edit it. And you'll see that it's a pretty, pretty basic thing for us to be able to do and us, us to set up. We've got a description at the top here. And so just tell, I'm going to paraphrase here. It basically says, hey, Auditory is going to connect to the ARP, pull in that vendor information, you know, vendor IDs, vendor invoices, so that when you get questions from vendors, the bots can take action on your behalf. We've got some systems that we need to connect. It's already defaulted, and we're going to use our AP shared mailbox. Let's click continue here. And all we really need to do here is determine what are the vendor or vendors. So I'm going to just set it up for one, just to, you know, based on, to make this kind of you know, simple and easy. But we've got a, synced, a synchronized list from the ERP system where you could select individual vendors you know, from the list. I'm going to select Witt and Anderson, and we're going to move on to the next you know, point in the process which is actually just to turn it on and let it run free. It turns on, but what the system is doing now is it's monitoring that email box for traffic. And we have a, a number of different things that are flowing through this email box. I'm gonna focus on one particular example here. In this particular line item, this conversation, there's a couple different pieces of that. The first is Lex Mathis has sent us an email. The request is, hey, we've sent some invoices to your company. Can we please get an update? That was sent on January 3rd at 4.53. About two minutes later, the bot has already taken action. You know, and the most common is it's gonna retrieve a list of invoices for that vendor with some details. The most important details, have they been paid or not? So right away, the bot takes action, says, dear AAA products, we've got some personalization there. We've checked our system, and within the past 90 days, these are all the invoices and invoice details, including whether or not these invoices has been paid. So if we kind of scroll through invoice two and three, and we've got one for 88, we can see that none of these are paid, but the bot has done its job. It's provided the information back to the vendor. Do you have the invoices? When do you think we're gonna you know, get paid based on those invoices? All that's done automatically, you know, directly through the bot itself. So a little bit about AP Help Desk for Auditoria. I hope you found this helpful. All right. Thanks so much for that, Rob. I appreciate you walking us through that. Um, as a reminder, um, if you have any questions, please enter them into the Q&A. And I've got, uh, I can answer them myself, potentially. I've also got some help from some people in the background here who can also help answer those super technical questions if you have any. But also, let me introduce you to a finance innovator named Chris Knightlich. Uh, Chris has been using our help disk functionality for quite some time. And uh, the, uh, he, he basically told me that Auditoria will allow them to scale their rapidly growing logistics business without dramatically increasing headcount. That's exactly what I um, mentioned earlier on. You can defer those FTEs. You can reposition people throughout the organization to higher level work. Um, you can give people a better quality of work life. Um, so well, how did that manifest itself within Chris's organization at, at Arrive Logistics? Well, they were able to reduce their headcount growth to 20%. They were originally predicting doubling in three years. So rather than 100% growth, they, they brought that down to 20% or more of a moderate, um, reasonable growth rate. And they handle thousands of vendor inquiries per day. That's not hundreds or dozens, that's thousands. Um, and that their, their help desk functionality uh, powered by Auditoria does that um, on average within 55 seconds. So I mentioned in the video earlier that it's less than a minute, it's actually less than 55 seconds. And they're projecting uh, a payback of more than $2 million in savings over three years. And they saw the ROI in the second quarter after implementation. So that said, let's let's shift gears a little bit. We talked about um, the AP help desk uh, and you know that was great. Um, now let's shift gears a little bit and talk about uh, vendor invoice data extraction. So vendor invoice data extraction, as I mentioned, is a, is a technique that we can use to uh, capture the data. It's, it's captured from PDFs that are attached to emails. And that you know, is then pulled in using a technology called computer vision, which is a very sophisticated type of optical character recognition powered by artificial intelligence and machine learning. And it uh, brings that in a place where a human being can then look at those, um, those invoices and upload them potentially into the system of record once the human being invo uh, approves the invoice. So let's bring Rob back in to talk about vendor invoice data extraction. Take it away, Rob. Hi, this is Rob Frasconi with Auditoria. Today, we're gonna to be talking about one of our smart flow skills, vendor invoice data extraction. You can find this skill on our smart flows management screen under the broad heading autonomous procure to pay. And here it is right here, vendor invoice data extraction. As you hover over any skill, you'll see a description pops up that explains exactly what that skill is doing. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to set one up. Now we already have a skill 
an instance running of the skill. You can see that to the right says one instance running. We're going to go up and, and set up another one just to show you how easy it is because it's a very straightforward process. We're going to make some basic selections. We're going to determine, hey, what ERP do we want to run this skill against? For what entity and list of, of vendors do we want it to run against? And then what is going to be the email box that we're going to use for all those vendor emails coming in with those attachments. Once we click continue, I told you it was very easy. It's super simple. I click continue, it turns on, it's ready to go. We're gonna go into that shared mailbox. Let's close that down here. And this is just a shared cloud mailbox that has send and receive capability. So something you're all used to. I've kind of really cleaned this up to make sure there's only one entry in here. And the only entry is from Lex Mathis. Lex Mathis is our contact at AAA products and Lex has sent us an invoice. It's invoice number 88 with a subtotal of $800 some tax for a total of $900. Right? So simple enough. Typically, you know, something like you would get today. The difference is that won't be, you know, handed off to a human. The system is actually going to read that invoice, extract the data from that invoice, create a draft record in Auditoria, and then finally create a record to be written back into the ERP system. Okay. Now, I navigated to a place called data management. It's where we're going to manage really all the data, all the records. It could be vendors. They could be journal entries. In this case, they happen to be invoices, or you may call them bills. Two main components here. You know, active records. This is more in, in draft mode. But I told you we actually already wrote this back to the ERP system. So we can click over here where it says data written to ERP. Now, you can choose. Do you want to do this on a manual basis? That gives you the, the chance for human review. Or do you want to automatically send those created records back to the system. You have that choice. In this case, we did this on more of a on-demand basis. I happen to go in here and review it and send it back already. But when we open it up, you can see some of the details. The vendor, the contact, that invoice number, the date, of course, that total amount. And then when we go into actions, we can't edit this one because it's already been sent back, but we can talk about some of the things that would be editable. So number one, here's that PDF attachment, same one you saw before header level information, including currency. It doesn't have to be USD, it can be any currency. So all the details that pertain to you know, every element on the invoice, and then the line items of the invoices themselves. In this case, kind of a memo or description, that's what we'll show in our ERP, and then that metadata dimensional selection, account, department, location. This can default from the vendor record within Auditoria, or you can opt for the bots to you know, learn over time you know, what these selections should be, right? These will sync to lists within your ERP systems, departments, department numbers, names, things of that nature. So we see our subtotal for $800. We have our total tax of $100. That is the record as it sits within Auditoria, but we already wrote it back. We're looking at the transaction list in this particular case, and I'm lucky because it happens to be the first transaction of the list. AAA products for $900. I am going to go into the details because this is pretty important. You probably have some questions around this. Say, hey, Rob, what kind of detail is the system able to write back? And you'll see it not only captured that $900 total, but the breakout from that line item detail, the coffee filters, the coffee K-cups, and even the sales tax. Let's close out here a little bit. That's a kind of a brief demonstration of our vendor invoice data extraction smart flow skill in generally replacing you know, human intervention, human keying of data you know, from accounts payable invoices for small, medium, and large companies. I hope you found this helpful, and please let us know if there are any questions. All right, great. Thanks again, Rob, for coming back in. So, cool. Uh, let me tell you about another finance innovator. This is a, a, a man named Ali Sayed, who's the head of accounts at Autocar. Now, if you don't know Autocar, uh, don't be surprised. Um, they are uh, the UK's largest provider of fleet vehicles, meaning if you wanted to be an Uber or Lyft driver and didn't have a car, Autocar would be happy to lease you that car. And then as you made money as an Uber or Lyft driver, you would you know, then pay your lease to Autocar. Um, they, they service those vehicles, they maintain them. And as you can imagine, they have a lot of vendors, um, you know, and those vendors have a lot of line items, whether it's um, you know, changing the tires, changing the oil, fixing a ding in the fender, uh, maybe there's a, a crack in the windshield. Those are all different vendors who provide that service. And, you know, 
uh, Ali and his team have to process all those. And he basically told me that with AI automation, their accounting department guides the business using cash performance data. So they've been able to handle their invoice volume at, a, at an extremely fast growing company without actually having to add additional staff. They're um, expanding into France and the Netherlands and other places within Europe. And uh, you know that's really what, what their main benefit was and why they sought uh, Auditoria for that, that um, service. They have mostly automated their operations, they close their month end faster, and they have robust cash performance reporting. So key takeaways, let's bring it home here and then we'll go to a Q&A. Um, and I, I may even introduce a special guest uh, who's here with me here today if, if I have any technical questions. So um, key takeaways. We can resolve many challenges such as repetitive work, manual tasks, and repeated follow-up by implementing AP automation. There are many fine vendors out there. Um, Auditory is one of them. I highly encourage you to uh, do your investigation, investigation and research. And if we can do a deep dive to help you understand what we do better, I, I'd welcome that opportunity. Um, you can deliver transparency, efficiency, and accuracy through automation to recover thousands of hours for your team every year. If you employ the most advanced technology, you can achieve the greatest impact with the fastest ROI. And then last but not least, please feel free to contact Auditoria for a customized demo of Auditoria Smart Vendor and see immediate results in your AP processes. With, without further ado, I will hand it over uh, to the Q&A section here. Um, I think we've answered some of the questions in, uh, in chat through, through Eric. Eric's online here. Uh, welcome, Eric. Hello, everyone. All right, which, which of these questions did you wanna tackle first, Eric? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so I've actually been uh, re responding in the chat uh, individually to them, but I uh, but a, a few good questions in there. Um, I, a very common one with uh, with vendor invoice data extraction always gets into uh, approval workflows, right? And and what do we do with those? How can we work with those? Um, I, although although Auditoria itself doesn't uh, create you know, our own approval workflows, we do, we do work very hard to integrate tightly with, with whatever, you know, whether you're letting the, uh, your, your system of record or your ERP handle approval workflows, um, or, uh, or if you're using a spend management tool to handle approval workflows, we do, uh, we do integrate uh, to make sure that, you know, when these invoices are coming in, if they're not approved, that, that, uh, that they can be kicked back out. Um, uh, and, and, I, Yvonda, that was a that was a good question um, on your part, um, and th and then the other one we had from Susie was if there, are, you know, uh, what if we have multiple companies, you know, but one email inbox that that covers those multiple companies, um, you know, how how can we determine which company uh, should you know should be the one to to be used for the data and the response when a question comes in? Uh, the the good thing here is that we can. Uh, uh, our, our smart bots, as part of their validation, they do check to see, you know, what uh, what vendor uh, is tied to what company when they're doing a response. Uh, we do a lot of validation to make sure that, uh, you know, that that the security of the data is um, is is taken first and foremost, and that you know the the bots would never do anything like like pass out uh, information to somebody who shouldn't have it or or even wrong information. Um, so. So uh, you know, we basically use your system of record to uh, to to make sure that um, that that all the all of those validations check out, and then um, if for some reason the bots wouldn't be be able to uh, to validate that, then they would hand it over to a human to handle. So so good questions so far. All right, good. Thanks for that, Eric. Um, we'll, we'll keep the line open for any other questions. Uh, I did see one come in that's more of a, um, an, I guess I, I could take this one. You know, what are some of the requirements when evaluating an automation solution? So um, I can give you my opinion in no particular order as you're um, evaluating new technology. And, and by the way, keep those questions coming in. Um, I would say, first of all, look for um, a, a a system that is easy to integrate with your existing systems. Um, as Eric just pointed out, we've worked really, really hard to have a very tight and secure uh, implementation right out of the box with all the standard cloud ERP systems. That's NetSuite, that's Sage Intact, that's Oracle ERP Cloud, that's Workday, and a variety of other um, leading cloud um, general ledger or ERP uh, applications. We've also worked very hard to tightly integrate with Coupa, Bill.com, uh, Conga, Salesforce, you, you name it. So all of those companies have what I would call um, robust and open, well-documented APIs, application uh, performance interface or uh, I don't know, maybe you can correct me on what API stands for, Eric. Um, uh, but it's you know it's the way that uh, systems communicate with each other. So ease of integration with, with your existing systems. 
uh, intuitive interface. And I hope that you saw when Rob gave the demo earlier that everything was very clear, very laid out. Um, and the system is designed for finance people, not for programmers. So um, you don't, we, we don't think that uh, you need to have a technical degree to be able to use uh, Auditoria and to help, help the smart bots you know, get started doing their work. Uh, I mentioned cloud-based. I think it's very important. A few years ago, the cloud was, uh, the least, was perceived as the, the, the less uh, safe option or the more risky option. Today, it's flipped on its head. The cloud um, has standards like SOC 2 Type 2 um, and other types of um, you know, security. Whereas uh, I could tell you right now, I talk to CFOs every day and they do not want to be in the data security business. And what keeps CFOs up at night is, is, is the bad guys getting into their systems. So they would rather give that to a cloud-based system like, like their ERP vendor or their um, accounts payable, accounts receivable vendors. So cloud-based uh, systems, quite important. Uh, Long-term scalability. So you know some, that goes along with the cloud. So if you're a growing business and looks like most of the people on this call are from fast growing businesses, I, I see several names I recognize. Um, you wanna choose a vendor, no matter who it is, that will grow with you from your current state to double, triple, quadruple where you are today. Um, a, a clear implementation timeline. So having somebody on in your organization that owns the project start to finish, that's very important. Uh, in my experience, if you don't have an owner, um, then the project can get stalled out, it could flounder. Um, you need somebody with clear ownership of that implementation timeline. You need a very compelling ROI that you can project and have confidence in that this thing's gonna save you money. Um, if you put a dollar into this system, can you get $3 of savings out of it? And you know, a lot of us on this call are finance people. And so we understand return on investment and how that's important. Um, and then the need for customizations versus configuration. Uh, there are lots of great vendors out there, lots of suppliers of what I would call robotic process automation. And these are tool sets that allow you to build whatever you want from scratch. It's kind of like a box of Legos. You can make it a, a car, a house, a boat, a tree. Um, but that takes time and it also creates a bespoke one-off application that you have to support or somebody has to support. I would highly encourage folks to look at off-the-shelf purpose-built software for specific tasks. You don't wanna be the only company using this one product. Um, and at Auditoria, we've got dozens and hundreds of companies that are using the products that we talked about today. So um, those are, the, those are the, uh, uh, the, the thoughts I had about the requirements for evaluating an automated solution. Anything you'd like to add, Eric? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, in addition uh, to, to, to what you were saying there, Nick, um, I, to, uh, to, to really drive home the point that, that we do take a lot of pride in our product, that it can be financed owned. Um, we've, uh, we've seen, you know, a, a lot of other products, especially like for vendor invoice data extraction, right. That are, that are pretty rigid, right. You're, you're working with a vendor, they update the format of their invoice. And now all of a sudden your, your, uh, your RPA tool doesn't understand the invoice, right. It can't pull the data off of it. Um, and, and so I really do want to drive home the point there that, uh, that our tool is flexible. It's smart and in a, in a computer vision way, it very much like a human looks at, a, looks at everything on the screen. And, and logically decides, you know, what is it um, and, and what kind of data is being presented. So, uh, so, so just really driving home that point that, uh, that our tool is, you know, it is, it is a step up from, from OCR for vendor invoice data extraction. And, and, you know, there is no, there is no onus on, on your vendors, right. That every time they change the format of their invoice that you're going to run into trouble. I've got, a, I've got a question for you, Eric, that um, it's probably going through the minds of, of probably most of the people on this call and people haven't asked it, so I'll just throw it out there. Um, if, if somebody wanted to implement a technology like this, what would be the set of steps that they would do like from start to finish, like from the moment that they've said, okay, we want to do this to, to going live? What does that look like to implement a technology like this? Yeah, that's that's an excellent question. Um, as as part of our uh, implementation process, we'll work with you, um, and uh, and your IT teams initially to uh, to set up the connections to all of your important systems. That'd be your ERPs, your system of records, any spin management tools that you have anywhere that the important data lives, um, or or needs to be written to, uh, and then um, we'll we connect to uh, uh, your mailboxes. Um, 
and and that is pretty much as simply as signing into those mailboxes. We you know we have certified connections with Gmail and and Outlook and Office 365 to make that very easy. And once those connections are in place, it's it's I uh, very much as Rob showed in the video there. It's a you know it's a four or five step wizard to to handle some of the ins and outs of of how you want the the smart flow skill to run. And that's and that's pretty much the long and short of it. Um, you know most of our customers will will do this in a in in a sandbox setup, right? A testing environment to to start out with, and and from what we've seen, I you know they're very quickly happy with what they see and and are moving to to production, you know, very quickly. Um, you know, we are pretty proud that that we that we quote our uh, implementation times in terms of weeks, right, instead of multiple months. Excellent. Thanks for that, uh, Eric. There's one question did come in. I can handle it if you want or if you want to take it. Um, Susie is asking, is your cost based on the number of emails or, do you, that, uh, or, or count or do you use a different process, like an all-you-can-eat process? Yeah, yeah, that's that's an excellent question. So, uh, so we do um, use a volume-based pricing or, or usage-based pricing um, in that I... Um, you know, it is it is going to be based on on the number of inquiries coming into the mailbox, uh, or the number of inquiries that get processed by the bots, or um, or or the number of invoices coming into the mailbox. Yeah, and we've done a calculation. Uh, we've got some very sophisticated um, ROI calculators. Let's say you know if a human if it takes a human being like five dollars to to handle an inquiry or process an invoice, um, the bots can do it for for far cheaper. So you know even with um, volume based or usage based pricing, um, the ROI is still very compelling to have a machine do it versus having a human being do it. Um, any other questions before we kind of sign off here today? All right. Well, in that case, um, I would like to thank you on behalf of Eric and the rest of the team here for joining us today. Uh, please enjoy the rest of your day and we'll sign off with a quick video uh, overview of Auditoria. Thanks so much for joining. Up to now, automation has helped finance and accounting teams in many ways, except one, the shared accounting mailbox. In a recent study, 70% of finance professionals stated repetitive follow-ups and lack of responsiveness are the biggest challenges they face. The accounting inbox is overflowing and someone must go through all these messages. Finance and accounting teams are drowning in emails and they need help. Enter Auditoria, the first conversational AI system purpose-built to handle finance and accounting tasks. AI-enabled smartbots engage with shared inboxes to execute tasks and automate redundant manual processes. For AP teams, Auditoria SmartBots intercept and respond to vendor email requests 24 hours a day, seven days a week, without relying on human intervention. More than 90% of incoming messages are understood and handled by Auditoria's AP help desk within 60 seconds. SmartBots also onboard new vendors and update tax forms for your suppliers. On the AR side, SmartBots optimize dunning and collections, processing customer payments quickly and efficiently. Auditoria manages your customer payments with intelligent classification rules for personalized engagement and sends courtesy notices based on targeted cadences. AR Help Desk automatically handles inquiries and provides copies of invoices and POs to your customers. SmartBots speed up payments, prioritize AR team performance, and provide critical insights into cash performance. With Auditoria, finance teams experience a dramatic increase in productivity. SmartBots handle thousands of requests, freeing your accounting team to handle more challenging work. SmartBots hand off to humans when necessary to optimize your team's efforts and focus resources on the most value-added tasks. Robust reporting improves decision-making and achieves better cash performance. Take back your inbox with Auditoria SmartBots so your teams focus on the most important finance work.